start recording, pull up my script, and uh, of course we start. Uh, as you enter the studio for your pre-interview match, Olaf is in his seat, bent over a little as he reviews a few notes, and you know as you as you approach, you can see him scribbling something onto one of his note cards. Uh, he's wearing a white button-up shirt, and his pants are held up by teal green suspenders. Of course, every week he has to have something teal. This week it's the susp the suspenders. I almost couldn't say that word. It's a hard word. Words can be difficult. It doesn't matter how many letters there are. Uh, mm -hmm. His his sports coat is draped over the back of his chair. Uh, but once he sees you, he realizes that you know he's out of time for that in between show. Uh, excuse me, in between interviews, and uh, stands up, motions for you to take a seat, and then uh, moves to don his jacket and get ready for the next uh, presentation. The production team sets up and lights go dim, and then just as he sits back down and with a soft clearing of his throat, Olaf begins. On behalf of the Solaris Gaming Commission, Donegal Media Group, Solaris Broadcasting Company, and of course, the Krieg Dominion Media, I am Olaf Krieg, and this is the Triple Press, bringing you the finest in combat sports entertainment coverage ever since 3022. Our second match of the night is getting set up even now as we speak, so it only seems appropriate we talk about those two teams now. First up, a team that many often see as being a lower tier competitor, but some may argue that they just have to find and maintain their momentum, at which point they'll be a powerful contender like many other teams. In previous weeks, this team has managed to make some movement on the leaderboard, but most recently they were crushed when the Liren Debutantes pilot Nidi Bui managed to score all three kills for her team. Currently ranked 8th in the league with a record of 2 wins and 4 losses, the Torian Nationals come currently seem to have a long road ahead of them if they want to make it into the locked-in position of the top six. Taking on the Torian Nationals tonight is one of my favorite teams in the league. Last week, they too suffered a crushing defeat by the Cyan Spirits, a move that has actually had the Spirits tie with them on the leaderboard. With a current record of three wins and three losses, this fifth-place ranked team is right in the middle of the leaderboard, and I can't wait to see what the Canopian Honeybees do next. I'm also fortunate enough, once more, to be joined by the owner-manager of the Honeybees, Luke Labrador, to talk about his team and what they'll be doing tonight in order to get higher up on the leaderboard. Luke, my friend, welcome to the show. How are you doing tonight? Bonjour, and uh, of course, I'm doing very well this, this particular week. That's good to hear. That is good to hear. My first question may have a little bit of weight to it, so try to bear with me if you would, please. Your team is currently 3-3, three and three, ranked number 5. I, I, I've said this already, of course. Uh, last week, the Spirits handed you a hefty loss. You're sitting with 35 cumulative points and are at the top of the bottom half of the league, but the gap to the bottom of the top half requires you to effectively double your current points and quickly. At this point, what is going through your mind with regards to the playoffs? Is it more of staying ahead of those below you, or are you trying to find a way to move up in points regardless of the void between 5th and 4th places? Well, um... As uh, as it as it turns out, we are tied with the uh, the spirits, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, we're hoping that we're going to be able to get up ahead of the spirits with this particular uh, this particular win, if we can be granted that such uh, privilege, and then we're going to promptly try to kick that ladder out from underneath the uh, people below us and um, make sure that uh, we stay ahead of them. Uh, doubling our points might be a little bit of a wishful thinking to be able to get into the four, three, two, and so on and so forth, considering the, the strength of the other players. But um, we're we're pretty hopeful about what uh, we may be able to accomplish with uh, staying in the top six. All right. And you're not in a bad spot as far as the top six are concerned either. It's just a matter of trying to close that gap for the top of the leaderboard. And uh, the spirits are facing the industrialists this week, so the the money is pr the betting pool is pretty solidly favoring the industrialists. So as far as the you know breaking that tie is concerned, uh, one could argue that it shouldn't be too hard for your team, uh, considering you're playing a team that many consider to be a less capable team. Of course, I have to be very careful how I choose my words here because my producers have had many post production meetings with me regarding some of the content that comes out of my mouth. Less performed this season. I yeah, guess they haven't do done. They haven't done as well. Okay. Uh, let's see. Following your last match against the Spirits last week, we found out that uh, Noel Rolnick and one of your techs have found more enticing offers elsewhere. And while this hasn't truly hindered your team as hard as others have, it has a, It has indeed left its mark. 
Uh, what sort of plans or thoughts do you have in order to cushion the blow for the next big draft that uh, may swing your way again? Well, uh, we were considering recruiting efforts, but that became kind of a null thing. Um, we're going to just continue with our training as the interim pilots show up as needed. Um, so we're going to hopefully be able to spend points into the coming season. However, it's a little bit late to be able to get any uh, top tier pilots to come back into our group. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to play a little bit more on the luck side of this thing. Indeed, indeed, and a lot of teams, uh, the Dragonborn in particular, the Torian Nationals. Uh, again, you know, we we talked about the Nationals being a less fortunate or less capable team than others, uh, comparatively speaking, at the very least. Uh, but those both those teams have definitely taken some big losses uh, with the draft uh, this season so far. Other teams, of course, for some strange reason, the Dover Crows, completely untouched. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's kind of a hit or miss. But also, you know, the Dover Crows, at least in their uh, in their defense, uh, a relatively new, un... Uh, oh, I can't think of the word I want to use here. Not the most well-established team, perhaps. So... You know the 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 scouts that are looking for these bigger stables on the on the planet are probably not going to be looking at the Dover Crows as much when they know there's teams with a little bit of a pedigree to them, such as the Honeybees and uh, and several others. However, it is to note that the Dover Crows have been doing very well for an expansion team. This is true. This is true. They're certainly doing better than their compatriots, the Rock City Wolverines, who have not mm. yet have yet to win a single damn match. Uh, I won't talk too much smack about them because as far as uh, expansion teams go, they are definitely my favorite team. Uh, now, next week, your team is slated to go up against the Lear and Debutantes. Historically, many would disregard this team uh, in, in a similar vein in some ways as the Torian Nationals. Uh, but under new a new management this year, they've truly seen something of a renaissance turnaround. Baron That's Isaac Weissman, Weissman, quite yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. experienced yeah, he, uh, pi uh, pilot himself is, wasn't he? Uh, well, he's got some experience. Ooh, excuse me, he's got some experience as a pilot, but more so the managing side, where he's definitely uh, come to grow into his own here. Uh, he's really done something with his team, and it can now be said that the debutants may have joined the ranks of the Dragonborn, the Industrialists, and the Golden Suns in terms of powerhouse teams in the league. Knowing that that's the opposition that you're about to face next week, what sort of thoughts go into your planning sessions, and what can we expect to see from you? Excuse me, from your team. When they face off against the debutants next week. Hmm. Well, as far as the concerns are related, um, we just need to make sure that we have our mechs in order this time. Uh, we have had some issues playing uh, juggling matches with our techs, uh, with the amount of mechs we had, so we got rid of a couple, and we should have our more annoying team up for next <laughs> particular. Um, particular you, you mean to say you're a more hard hitting team? Like, oh, you can say that. You can say sure, that. Sure, <laughs> sure. You're better pilots. You're better pilots. All right, Mech fans. That's all the questions I've got, and thankfully just in time, as that is also the sound of the match getting ready to start. So let's go ahead and switch over to the Krieg Dominion blimp and watch all the action as it unfolds. All right. So I need to first switch over to that. That's not the right screen. Uh, did you read my notes on the um, notes for GM? You know, I saw something in there now that I think about it. Uh, but I don't remember if I saw it on my copy or if I saw it on the one you sent. Uh, there was, The thing I saw mentioned the word donations, I believe. Yes. Would you like to discuss or is it something I need no. to refer to the notes more? No, it's uh, it was just basically um, ten wealth to um, uh, like uh, war relief efforts and um, okay. people's parties and things like that. All right, and, well, um, well, I can. I mean, I can go ahead and make that note now. Uh, okay. In your finances for this week, we will put this as an other uh, donation to let's say. Uh, man, I had a thought and I, it disappeared before I started typing anything. Donation to, we'll just say donation to less fortunate. Yeah, whatever. Minus 10. So that will take you down a little bit, but of course, you know, you'll be able to claim yeah. that on your non-existent taxes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, what was the, uh, 
And then I'll try to remember, uh, and if you could remember as well for the post match interview, that'll help. We can we can we can do a small bit of RP there to talk okay. about that or, or or something. Um, our first bid, our first uh topic here. I've already added the one free experience point that every pilot and tech gets each week. So that takes us to the midweek events. You chose marketing and training for yours. So mm-hmm. go ahead and uh, well, first you got to connect to the server. Um, yeah, I just have to click the button. Yep. Ooh, excuse me. All right, there we go. Yeah, that was uh, that was the last detail that I was forgetting. Yep. All no right. worries. That that nap it can be great, but also like the the higher brain functions, it takes a few minutes to reboot them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, go yeah. ahead and uh when you're ready, go ahead and give me a 2d6 roll for your training or excuse me, your marketing is first. For a total of nine. 9 for marketing, that's going to give you plus 2d3 wealth. So go ahead and hit me with that 2d3 roll. For a total of 3. Go ahead and add that into your. Uh... Those are the taxes that I saved. Yeah, that was the that's the kickback on your donation. I don't know if that's yeah. I I don't know if that's the right word or not, but. And then go ahead and give me a two d six for training. None for a total of six, which is unfortunate. No result. The Torian Nationals have elected to do some training of their own. And they also get no result out of it. So none of the drills that they ran this week were particularly um, effective in as far as establishing new core memories for on the battlefield. All right, neither mm. team – well, let me rephrase that. My team can't do gather intelligence because I already know what I'm going up against. Uh, your team has elected to not do gathering intelligence. So that takes us to where I load the unit list. I assign you your team. Oh. And you do a review to make sure I've done everything correctly. You'll be facing a Warhammer 6D, a Catapult C1, and a Jenner 7F. Unfortunately, two regular pilots and a green pilot. With no special advantages, or if I'm not mistaken, I don't think they even have... No, none of them have tactics. So you've got an advantage in that two of your three pilots have tactics, and one of them has more edge than the others. So, And you also have a significant... Almost uh, 40, we think, roughly 4,000 battle value advantage. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ. <laughs> I'm gonna get oh, smashed. my God. I'm going to get smashed. <laughs> um... But, yeah, take a moment, review your, uh, your people there. Make sure I got correct information uploaded. If you are satisfied, let me know. I am the home team, so I'll be choosing the home field. I'm um, good. Okay. I'm going to choose the south. I'm going to choose the center. No, um, I mean you could choose whichever one you want. You're going to take the north. <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry, right. I'm being a little, I'm being a little snarky here. All right. Yes. And I have verified all of the settings are correct. We are back to our standard settings. You do have a Griffin 2N. I think that's where a lot of your uh, battle value bonus comes from. Is that Griffin 2? Well, that and the skills of your various pilots compared to mine. So mm-hmm. this will be interesting. Oh, let's see. Give me just a second. I need to compare and contrast what I see on my screen. Or excuse me, what's being captured on the screen versus what's on the screen. That didn't make any damn sense, but made enough sense. All right. I've done the streaming game too myself for a little bit. I don't need to zoom in quite that far. All right, what do we got? We got a catapult. We got some fairly open terrain, actually. Yeah, but you've got some hidey holes. You mm. definitely going to take full advantage of them. Oh wow! I'm, I didn't realize I was deploying all of my people right away. Okay. Yeah, where you um might have taken that uh, option off or something. No, individual initiative should be on. I'm going to verify that right quick. View game options. Not too late to restart, but I mean it's your choice. No, that's why I want to look right real quick. Let's see. Pilot abilities, individual initiative, commander initiative. 
we should be good to go. And we add, and individual initiative definitely is in effect because your stalker rolls first before my catapult and Jenner, then your Jenner, then my Warhammer, and your high speed Griffin is last. So looks like an individual initiative is working as intended. Yeah. All right. We are off. Round one, my friend. Ooh, I can almost make it to right where I wanted to be. Actually, I can jump. And make it to right where I wanted to be. Pretty much a golden ratio right there of 10 hacks away. Yeah. Yeah. Musa Jakawa, one of my favorite names of all the players in the league, and they finally get a chance to come out on the field for probably like the, only their second or third time as a member of this team. Oh, really? Yeah. And well, they're a green pilot. They've been sitting at 5-6 for a hot minute, so... Didn't really get much of an opportunity to use them as... That stalker is going to be a problem because that's what stalkers do. Stalkers going to stalk. Yeah, but also that Griffin. But he's only fortunately he's only got one PPC for me. About oh my god. But we're not gonna waste ammo or heat. Jenner is just not going to bother. Playing a little conservative at the moment. I don't know if that's a good idea, but it's what we're doing. And I forgot about that Griffin and its fucking ECM. Not that I could really do anything about it. I'm. Man. Trying to have teams that keep winning lose a match. Oh, I gotta update the freaking thing. I forgot. This isn't the Golden Suns uh, debutantes match. Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. I got the wrong. I have the wrong uh, team logos up on the on the screen. Got to fix that right quick. There we go. Okay. Right. Uh, wow! The catapult takes a head hit right off the bat. Re rolls it with edge. Uh, catapult takes some damage. Let's see what just else we got. Just a little bit of damage. Yeah, just a little bit. Nothing big. Everything else misses, it looks like. Mm hmm But I kind of expected, because I think I needed a 10 and an 11 to hit. Heat is fine across the board. Excuse me. And initiative. My Warhammer's moving first, and your Griffin, again, moving last. Well, that plus two tactics is going to be a major problem for me. Um, oh, he's just going to sit tight. A little hidey hole. Yeah, you have a little bit of one there. Mm-hmm. Mmm, nice. Putting yourself where if I try to take a rear shot at you, I'm looking at mm -hmm. uh, landing in the... Fucking swamp. In a fucking swamp. I see what you did there. Oh, that's a... Hold on. I'm learning. Minus one, minus two. Uh, I, I had one... Changing from one hex took four movement points away from me. But I just realized why. It's because there's one facing movement change, an elevation change, and light woods, which is plus two itself. So, not what I wanted. So, we'll come over. 
here. And then jamage. Yep, and then jamage. But that's okay. Now the question is, what are you going to do with your griffin? Are you going to come in and get the easy kill on the jenner? Or are you going to worry about the two heavies down on the other end of the map? Not the other end of the map, but you get the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit of psychological operations. That's the second time this week I've used that term. <laughs> the other one being in my Blood Bowl match earlier this week. Which, by the way, ended... I'm not going to tell you how it ended. Speaking of things that I also participate in besides the GTL, currently on the Discord server that I am running, the Creed Dominion server, there is a poll going on in which people may vote on the show that I'm going to start at the beginning of the new year, or shortly after the beginning of the new year. So your vote can count and help me determine what I'm going to do with my content. And if you haven't voted yet, what are you waiting for? And if one of the answers to why you haven't voted yet is because you're not on the server, get on the server. Link is in the server. server. What's that? Yeah, I think so. It's, I mean, yeah, we're fairly for quiet sure. for the most part. <laughs> oh, man, I shouldn't be laughing at my own joke like that. Um, but, yeah, no, we are uh, – we're there. <laughs> we, we talk some shit a little bit every now and again. Uh, but more importantly, uh, come to the Discord server if you haven't already. Cast your vote for what show I will be starting. It'll be a TTRPG campaign that I'll be kicking off sometime uh, between late January and er early February, if the timeline can be uh, maintained in a non-Marvel Cinematic Universe sort of way. It's also a bad Speaking story. of Marvel Cinematic Universe, I started watching The Boys that's not at all Marvel, but go ahead. No, it's terrifying. It's it's and an interesting take on the superhero genre. Yeah. I've seen some of it. I, uh, mostly like probably like the first three or four episodes of uh, the first season. I never got much further than that. Not because I didn't enjoy it. It's just I enjoyed other things more. The voting on this poll, by the way. Revolves around Alien RPG, Warhammer 40k Only War, and Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader. On that note, Stalker taking some hits. Stalker eating a laser and nothing else from the catapult. That's so unfortunate for me. Your Jenner also miss, uh, does not get hit. My catapult takes some more hits. Eating a lot of fire from that Stalker. My Jenner now taking some hits. And my Catapult taking some more stuff. And falling the hell over. What the hell? Needed a need to roll a five to stay standing. Rolled a four. Some bullshit. That's some fucking honeybee bullshit right there. Stings, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It really it. does. I, I, oh, I see where you're going with this. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I you're gonna bring it back to how try. I whooped your ass. I didn't really whoop your ass. It was, it it wasn't necessarily a close match, but I definitely had concerns a few times. <laughs> yeah, um, I can I can do some things to your thing. Yeah, thing it away. Oh my god, I get punched in the head. Rerolled with edge. Jenner missed his kick and needs to make a reroll, but he made it. Fortunately, no pilots were harmed. In the series of this turn. Heat is apparently managed. 95 to 97 favoring the honeybees at present. Mm. My Warhammer and Jenner are both moving before anybody from the honeybees. But my catapult moves last. Yep, I knew that was going to happen. But that's okay. I'm going to show you the true nature. The true power of the Jenner. The back shots? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, okay. don't, I don't know what I'm talking about, more importantly. 
I like jumping around. It's really gratifying at Griffin. Yeah. But it is. Catapults up. Nice. We have uh, got a little bit of a trench warfare kind of thing going on here. It's interesting. Should work out. Griffin takes a shot. Oh. I forgot to mark on here that the Griffin has extra monies involved for repair costs. Stalker takes a hit. Warhammer takes a hit. Catapult takes another head hit. That's the third head hit, dude. Jesus Christ. Second one on the catapult. Rerolled it with Edge. He's fine. Warhammer needs to take a piloting stand or piloting skill roll, but they're fine. Stop smacking my face, bruh. I got those SRMs. Those SRMs are fucking nasty. One of my favorite crit seeker weapons. 91 to 96 favoring the honeybees, by the way. At this point, mm. I'm starting to think if I could just hold off, but I don't know, man. I just don't know. Your Jenner, then my Jenner. Can we have a dance of Jenners? Is that what do you? Mm. I wonder what do you call a bunch of Jenners in a group? You know, like animals. You know, like Jedi. Jedi. <laughs> is it a whirling? Is it a whirling of uh, Jenners? Is it a, mm. a Jenner war party? Is it a murder of Jenners? No, there's a storm crow. You, that's that's that that a group of those mechs. You call that a cluster? Actually, not a murder of crows. Yeah. Clustered because I, it's uh, clan mech. Get it? Oh my god. <laughs> um I was uh I was trying to go with the moose nieces kind of thing. <laughs> and I'm nieces. not really sure what a Jenner is. Is uh, a Jenner a bird? I, you know what? I don't know either. I really don't know. Uh that is unfortunate that my Jenner does not move before your stalker, because I'm gonna do this. Which means you could easily counter it by moving away. By moving literally one step forward. I mean, yeah, but I don't know. I'm sure I was going somewhere with that thought, and I just can't remember where. Can't figure out what I was trying to do now. It was the obvious move. Well, yeah, if you don't want to get kicked in the back of the head. I still have back shots for days, though. Yeah. I mean, four of them? Mm-hmm. Because my heat has gone down. Hmm. All 
trying to pop that thing like a fat pimp. It's not working. Not fat pimp. Fat pimple. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, I really, really need to do better self-editing before I speak. <laughs> I blame Microsoft. Because you can't edit your work until either you're doing it or until it's complete. Oh, look at that. The Stalker taking internal structure damage. Uh, hitting that right torso rear two times in a row. Oh, Gunner terrible. Taking damage. Stalker taking all 15 of a single salvo of missiles, but none of the other one. Catapult takes hits. Catapult eats a bunch of SRMs. Catapult losing internal structure and the... Oh my god. Catapult heavy damage. Losing an LRM-15. And the pilot takes a hit. Uh, at least he's awake. And the stalker made his PSR. Shocker. He did a two. Yeah. Stalker's at six heat. 93 to 83 favoring the honeybees going now into round five. Mm. Oh man. And I was looking more at the battle value than I was at the initiative order, so I have no idea who goes first or next. You can just look at round report. I can. I don't want to. I'm gonna oh, be okay. obstinate about it. All right. <laughs> Uh. I've uh, wheeled myself into a crevasse. Yeah, you have. Ooh. Oh, nope, I still have line of sight. One quick second, I get your ribbon as a plus five Let's repair. This. All right, Stalker eats a medium laser, Jenner misses on everything it fired. My Jenner hits with one of two lasers, my catapult hits with one of four lasers. Catapult loses more internal structure. The Warhammer takes a head hit and re-rolls it with Edge. My God, man. Uh-oh. Catapult so goes down. Ammo explosion. Ooh. Ooh. I just bought that damn thing. Uh, let's see. Three total hits for the pilot. And he's blacked out. Catapult is dead. That was by the Griffin. So Baker gets credit for that. CPT. Uh. 
I will be making a 1d6 roll later to see if that catapult is salvageable. 13 heat on your Jenner. Running yeah. super hot. 92 to 57, my Warhammer, your Stalker, your Jenner, your Griffin, and then my Jenner. This is going to be fun. Um, shit. There have been an exorbitant amount of head hits in this match, by the way. A yeah. Lot more, a lot um, more than I'm used to seeing. It it was a bit um a little on balance there. Yeah. Fortunately for everybody that took a head hit, or in the catapult's case, multiple, uh, they had edge. <laughs> yeah. I think you can see what I'm planning. I'm not 100% sure what you're planning. What I do know is I'm going to cause as much damage as humanly fucking possible before my next Ooh. die. You did one of the things that I uh, anticipated. I'm sure you did. or Somewhat. Did. Okay. I don't know. English is my first language, but it, I'll make it sound like it isn't. Okay, I'll go with that. All right, Griffin eats both PPCs and a medium laser. Unfortunately, it doesn't crunch anything juicy. Stalker. Ooh, a CT critical. Rerolled. No edge remaining. Warhammer continues to take hits. Your Jenner takes one of four lasers I fired. My Jenner loses. Ugh, jump jet. It makes the Jenner heavy damage now. And still more. Everybody's just focusing down the Jenner. Loses a, loses a right torso. And is still standing. Ha! Eat. Nice. Eat it. Fucking eat it, Luke. Okay. <laughs> um, also, eat my foot. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna <laughs> chump on this a little bit. And I got some napkins I can eat. All right, there you go. All right. Oh, man. You're gonna kick me in the head? Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> That's why I said eat my foot. <laughs> oh. Go ahead, punch with your stubby little arms. Eight percent, not bad. Yep. I kicked. Left torso. Okay. Unfortunately, it didn't do any real any real damage. Hey, Garrick woke up. Oh nice. After like three wounds? Yeah. Okay. He just needed a 10 to wake up. <laughs> just a 10. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, let's see. Oh, goody. Both my surviving mechs are moving before any of yours. 89 to 46. Um, sit tight there. And... Hey, look, my Jenner's arm is still there. <laughs> oh, nice. And that arm looks so much better than the real Jenner arms because they're really 
not arms. They're just mounts that swivel. <laughs> Things are going to get a little bit toasty. Yeah. Let's see. Warhammer eating fire from the Jenner. Warhammer misses with one, hits with the other PPC, misses with both lasers on the Jenner. Warhammer then proceeds to eat a bunch of shit. Not still standing. Falls over, loses its arm armor, taking internal structure. Oh, uh, where are you? Hammer. Moderate damage. Pilot is okay. Another one of those needs a five, but rolls a four. And now I am on the ground and facing the wrong direction. Oh, shit! Oh. That, that's a crunch. Yeah, that is a big fucking crunch. It just crippled my Warhammer. Oh, man. Fuck me. Jenner needs a 4 plus to avoid shutdown. Warhammer, oh my god. And I ran his heat high that time. Before the plus engine the hits. Plus two engine hits. Yep. Oh, man. Luckily there is no ammo to explode. I failed the ammo reroll. Or ammo roll. I needed a 4 oh, wow. and rolled a 2. At least that wasn't the um, machine guns uh, Warhammer. The 6R, which has machine guns and an SRM-6? Yeah, yeah, that would have been uh, catastrophic in every sense of the word. And you rolled a 12 from the op from one end of the spectrum to the other on a 4-plus to avoid a shutdown. You mother... 88 to 41. Donculus. Absolutely ridiculous. Oh, who did that, by the way? Was that the Stalker that did that to the Warhammer? No, it was the uh, Griffin after he stomped it. Oh, that's right. He kicked the... Yeah, the Griffin. Oh, that's... A... Ooh. Ooh. Uh... Yeah, I didn't mean to click done. The Warhammer is, is uh, surrendering. Oh, okay. I meant to hit eject. I don't know what I was thinking. And then That's okay. That. Oh, okay. Yeah. The Nationals okay. have capitulated, my friend. Yep. Uh, the Jenner wasn't going to flee, except for the fact that he is aware that the, uh, the Jenner was not in good shape to try to take on all three of your mechs uh, once the Warhammer was out. And the Warhammer had 20 heat before he did anything else, so there's really no point to continue. Uh, I'm just clicking done to get so it'll cycle through. And, That's a round nine victory? Oh, because the, because the fucking mech is still on the board. Yeah, you have to eject, I guess, but it doesn't yeah. really matter because this is round 10. Oh, was it really? Yeah. I wasn't even paying attention to the round count at this point because I had basically already surrendered the match. Those injuries or whatever. Wow, I failed. Hold on. Yeah, why is my... Why is my... Okay, my still... Go ahead. You blew up. Uh, So I ejected the Warhammer. The oh, pilot took one managed... damage, needed a three... 
to stay awake rolled a two i'm like come on man that's just pouring oh salt in this gash that's been put into my chest anyway all right there you go you win congratulations you son of a bitch <laughs> i'm teasing don't listen to my rude comments <laughs> over here all right victory points you get three for winning and unfortunately the nationals only get one you get five for killing the uh catapult for ammo explosion it's uh yeah. gone gone you get three yeah. for the Warhammer. Uh, and the Jenner managed to flee from the field, so you don't get any points for that. So that gives you a total of 11 points to my uh, one. Was the Warhammer defeated by a melee attack? It was, but that gets counted in the uh, fan roll that will be happening shortly. Oh, yeah, okay. So I forget 11. where that does the thing. Yep, yep. Uh, speaking of, pull up the rules so I can go through this and not make mistakes. Although I'm mistakes anyway. Let's see. Victory points, fan rolls. We'll start with you. Uh, let's see. Let me get to the right page here. Page twelve. All right. Plus one for winning the match. No streaks. Plus two for destroying an opponent's mech. That's plus three, and then plus two more for a total of plus five for a physical attack, killing a mech. So 2d6 plus five, if you would, please. Four plus four, five is nine. nine. That gives you one additional fan. You pick up two fans from your sponsors for a total of three. Uh, let's see. The honeybee. I'm sorry. The nationals get two d six minus one for losing, minus one for two losses in a row. So that's going. I'm sorry. I may have misspoke there. So minus two total so far. Uh, minus one total so far. One of their own mechs was destroyed. I'm not sure if I had the precedent of a physical attack killing a mech counting for the team that lost that mech. I'll give him a plus one. I think I actually have had that precedent. So the, the Nationals end up with a total of plus one. For a total of eight, which is plus one fan for them. So the Nationals managed to gain another fan, and I'm going to make the argument that it was because they were bit on the realistic side of things by surrendering when they should have. Well, that's going to be easy. 11 plus 1 is 12. Plus 10 is 22. 12th for you. Plus another 5 from your sponsorship. And 12 wealth for the Nationals. So let's go ahead and start updating spreadsheets. Starting with the Nationals. General info. They are now two wins and five losses and have 28 cumulative victory points. They gained a fan. Match earnings are 12. Eight from their fans. And then for the Canopians. Now, four wins and three losses, and 30, or excuse me, 46 points cumulative. They gained three fans, taking them up to 29. You now have a plus four on your super secret squirrel modifier. Can you roll 1d6 in the, uh, in the Mega Mech for me real quick? Okay. One. Outstanding. All right, finances. Match earnings, 22. Fan income, 20. Salaries, maintenance, medical. I don't have room in here for your, uh, what you call it, thingy. Oh, that doesn't need to be. So we can change it there. Okay, so other. Plus five wealth. 
in five there. All right. Next up is the draft. Yeah. So you, my friend, two d six plus one for winning the match, and no other modifiers apply. Wow. Boxcars. Yeah. Bees. Yeah, that's that's rough, dude. Mm -hmm. There's been scouts watching the honeybees for weeks. Yeah. And they know yeah. when they see a winning team. Uh this is going to be for two pilots and two techs. Uh they're looking for Donald and and uh, Yeah, Baker. they're trying to get the Baker and Susanti, yeah. Baker and Susanti, yeah. All right. I'm moving these my windows around a little bit here so I can see what I'm actually I can just do it right. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, we'll start at the t at the bottom of the list as I see it. So Kaplan, two or less, she is gone. What? One. There she goes too. Holy cow! And she just joined the team too. Yeah. All right. Next up is Baker. Uh, but give me just a moment. Don't roll yet. I got updating your uh, roster here. All right, Baker, two or less, and he is gone. Stay. Four. Susante, two or less. He is gone. There he goes. Two. Susante gets drafted. That's rough, man. I you've had he, him. Uh... You've had him from the. Well, I mean, you've had. Yeah, you've had Susante from the beginning. Baker was. Uh, I think Baker I was have... somebody you recruited last year. Yeah. We'll do your replacements momentarily. Let's do your text first. Or excuse me, your two techs that we have to look for. Uh, Nagumbo is first. I'm, I know I said his name wrong. I'm going to. No, uh, you're you're doing better. Uh, two or less. All right, Nagumbo is safe. Rusty, two or less. Safe. Vance, two or less. Safe. Derek, two or less. Gone. There's Derek. Derek is drafted. Uh, actually, can't read. Okay. And then we have Joseph on a one. Safe. Brianne on a one. Safe. Wow. Two pilots and a tech. And a good pilot, too. Two good pilots. Yeah. Like, long-termers. Like, they've been with you. And, and, oh, man, I almost feel bad now because one of your questions was specifically related to the draft. For your interview, uh, go ahead and give me. Uh, you're gonna roll one d six several more times. You're gonna do six total times. Uh, first one okay. is for your first two pilots. Or excuse me, your first pilot. So go ahead and roll. Uh, okay, two. That's, a, that's a green pilot. Give me your next roll. Two. Also a green pilot. All right. This is for their experience points for each. So one more time. Two points, Ooh. and then for the second one, one point. One. Jesus Christ, these guys are like babies. Yeah. Uh, for your tech, go ahead and give me that now. Uh, one d six. Ooh, one two three five. four five. That's a regular tech. And then one more time for their experience points. Four points. Four. All right, let me go ahead and throw those bad boys on. You were definitely uh, hit hard there. Not only did you lose some good people. You gain some low end uh, replacements. Yeah. There's going to be some switching around and doing some things yeah. for the next match because it's going to be against a hard opponent. Yeah. Yes, it is. Uh, I'm just, I need to name these guys New Pilot. New Pilot. I'll worry about the names later. Yeah. I'll probably add them in after when I go through to update stuff. Yeah. Uh, two and oh no nope. Oh. My tired brain is like, okay, make up a name quick. And <laughs> yeah. my brain is like, my brain is like, okay, Ubu the cat girl, Dironymus the third. <laughs> that and reminds my, me of like, go ahead. And I'm like, 
you know you could have picked anything but like a third esquire is just like hilarious to me <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of um that key the key and what is it, key and peel skits that was really hard for me to say i don't know why uh oh, when they're doing guys. the the football players oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> what is just a bunch of jackhammer sounds <laughs> all right i got all of that updated uh now for the nationals to roll okay. their draft uh, thing so they have now three losses in a row uh so that's going to give them a minus three total Ooh, oh my god to this roll for a total of four which is of course no drafters. No draftees, I should say. Okay. All right. Maintenance. Let's look at your maintenance. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mechs with one, two, three, four, five, six. Is one of the six. locusts sold? I'm sorry? Is one of the locusts sold? Uh, You did sell a locust, didn't you? Should be in the price. Should be sold. Oh, I have I have one locust. I have a one M. Oh, okay, good. Um, somehow I have. Wait a second. One, two, three. Yeah, four, it five, makes six. it makes okay, sense. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at my sheet now. Yeah, you have one mech, or yeah, one mech that is unmaintained, and you were doing the whole juggly bit. I think what you did last week, I if I'm not mistaken, you left your crab unmaintained because it has only one week of being unmaintained. Yeah, and then we went to the Marauder. Well, the Marauder was crippled from last week. Yeah, so Rusty went in. Yeah, Rusty's on did... it. Ooh, missed that when I put your setup. So, because you're gonna make your repair attempts with the Marauder, or for the Marauder here shortly. Uh, crippled veteran. Crippled veteran is. And Rusty is the assigned tech. Three edge. Anyway, so we have one mech that is currently unmaintained. I am tracking the crab being unmaintained. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to take it from one week out to two weeks out. I need a 1d6 plus two. On a six, it degrades further. 1d6? Correct, plus two. Five, Five plus two is seven, is seven, which means it is now lightly damaged. All right. So effectively, you have minus three for maintenance. Yes, that sounds right. <clears throat> <clears throat> For the Nationals, their maintenance costs are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All their mechs are maintained, other than the fact they have a busted-ass spider. Regular crippled is 5 plus... Rodberry has two edge. Nice. Okay. One more time. I'm losing my mind. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. So it's minus three. Maintenance. I love how um uh the mechs will be like on maintained for like a week and then they start falling apart. Meanwhile, in the American military, you get like an A-10 Warthog, and they basically just spray WD-30 at it, and then scream at it to refuel it, and then it just flies. <laughs> well, some some vehicles can, uh, they're they're more, um, there's, a, there's, a tech, there's actually a quirk, I forget which one, I want to say uh, Rugged, which makes yeah. them easier to maintain. I'm rolling a 1d6 real quick to see if that uh, catapult is recoverable or not. Okay. On a 6, it is recovered. It is not recovered. Mm. Sad catapult. It's an expensive map too. What is it like? Eight well? Six uh, well? Something like that, yeah. Six yeah. or seven. Okay. Yeah. God. Just bought that fucking thing too. 
God damn it. All right, let's do some repair costs here. Starting with the... I need that tape. All right, we'll do the uh, Warhammer. Is crippled, a heavy mech. That is eight wealth. Catapult is straight out. Jenner, heavy damage, light mech. One. So that's minus nine here. I have a pilot with three injuries. That is a free wealth for costs. Pilot is out for 10 days which means they will not be available next week. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, you have a griffin with light damage, but it's plus five, so that's going to be six total. You have a stalker with moderate damage. That's an assault mech. Moderate is six for a total of minus 12 there. And zero med. Go ahead and put those numbers into yield spreadsheet, starting with yours. Repair costs, minus 12. Uh, medical is zero. I forgot. We got to do salaries, too. I think I skipped that step, but that's fine. We'll come mm -hmm. back to it in just a moment. Uh, nationals, finances. Repair costs, minus nine. And then minus three. So they just paid for... They uh, every bit of money they earned from them from the match itself has just gone out to keep themselves going. All right. Oh. Starting with the nationals, two for all the greens and regulars. That's easy for the pilots. Three, four, five, six total in salaries for the honeybees who have just had their payroll reduced, probably. Yes. Two for all the greens and regulars. Three. Four, five, six. Compared to last Not week. Of, compared to last week, minus nine. The week before, minus ten. So you're you're cutting corners here, I guess. Yeah. It's salary uh, reducing salaries. <laughs> uh let's see. Make sure I'm not skipping any steps. Maintenance, salaries, repairs, medical. Repair rolls. All right. This is where things get really interesting. Starting with you, my friend. Okay. Three plus for your griffin with three attempts. 1d6. Nope. That's a one. There it is. That's a three. Yeah. All right. And I'm pretty sure I hit your Jenner, but I never marked down damage on it, so... Ah, fuck it. I'll let it go. It, I think the most it would have been was uh, one point of damage. One... One, what you call it? One regular, or I'm sorry, one wealth in costs. So okay, I'll, I'll let it go. It's fine. Probably not fine, but whatever. Uh, stalk, yeah, stalker three plus with four total attempts. Done. It's a five. And lastly, your marauder from last week, four plus three attempts. Or excuse me, four attempts. No. Nope. One Two. more. There it is. All right. So. Those individual mechs are repaired from your team. Let me update your Marauder. Here. Marauder is now ready. Your Crab is not, because it has not been repaired. That goes to zero. That also goes to zero. Yeah, we should sell the Crab. That's eh, not a bad deal. Hold on. I mean, it's up to you. Don't listen to me. All right, for me, uh, Warhammer has a uh, tech specialist, which, if I'm not mistaken, let me double check this. I'm pretty sure tech specialist is 2d6 is rolled using the better of the two. Nope. That's good. No, I get a plus one to repair rolls. So instead okay. of rolling... Oh, I already updated my target numbers on the sheet. That was brilliant of me. Okay, so I, it tells me exactly what I need to roll. So roll 1d6 and then copy paste. Oh, I'm not even... Where did I just type that? Son of a bitch. I typed it on the just word sheet. A, just a message to your mom. And then she's like, what? 
No, I typed it on uh, Word. Oh, okay. But fortunately, I didn't hit enter, so it wouldn't have sent if I did message anybody. All, All right. right. I need, for this Warhammer, I need a three plus with four total attempts. Got it on the first one. Not rolling for the catapult because it's gone. Jenner needs a three plus with three attempts. Got it. And for this busted ass spider I've been carrying around for a little while, I need a five plus with three attempts. One, two, got it. Nice. All right. Let me update nationals. Other of that. Oh, updated. Oh, now experience points. Let me add one additional point to all of your peoples and then add them up on the Excel. So, starting with the Nationals, because this is easy. Let's see. Beach gets one. Garrick gets one. And Mr. Kawa. Salam gets one. Are you? Uh, Khalil gets one. And Schmidt. Then for the uh, Canopian honeybees. Baker. Only one left, but he gets four points. Fourteen. No, I saw, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. Chu also gets two points, taking her to seven. Susanti, mm. unfortunately, is gone. And then for your Tex, Vance gets two, taking them to 17. Joseph gets two, up to four. Derek, gone. All right, that should be it for all the post-match stuff, except for the post-match interview. So let me switch my screens around. Let me stretch. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. And we're back in the studio, and uh, Olaf is happy, excited almost. Not quite. Almost. Uh, and he says, congratulations, Luke. That was, uh, that was a thrilling match to watch. Once again, uh, you know, seeing the honeybees take a win and room and basically finish the match unscathed for the most part, some damages. Yes. But generically speaking across the board, hardly even touched. Although I'm sure that repair bill is going to be pricey. Well, the, uh, the Griffin is always a little bit pricey to get repaired. However, it's become a mainstay in my roster for the most part uh, that, because of its ECM and uh, SRMs. And those SRMs are nasty. That Griffin, mm. uh, Baker, two kills, killing both the Warhammer and the Catapult. Uh, one, of course, with, with a solid kick to the back uh, as it laid prone, ending the match for all intents and purposes because that was, I believe, the moment that the Warhammer pilot surrendered and then moments later the jenner withdrew from the officially recognized combat area i guess is the best way to explain that uh but you know a win is a win and uh congratulations that was that was really good now i've been told uh you know as we were getting ready to switch over to the blimp i was given a note uh apparently you, i guess you made a donation of some sort uh to a local charity or or something Yes, uh, for war reliefs and uh, poverty relief funds, um, I am always thinking of the people, and I decided that I would like to uh, put a little bit of my hard-earned winnings towards that. The team agreed, of course, and the finance manager uh, signed off on it, and we were able to put ahead a little bit of money towards um, uh, some more deserving people. Well, I want to point out that a little bit of money in this case amounted to somewhere in the neighborhood of about 10 million C-bills, yes. uh, which is a significant amount of money. Now, to be fair, it was spread across a number of um, charity organizations, but hopefully 
by the end of the month, we'll see something good come out of that, uh, something that we can see for the people that need it the most. Yes. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Luke. A great match. Fun to watch. And may uh, may your next week turn out to be better than this one, even. Uh, because uh, as I'm hearing now, I'm getting notes again, uh, some of the contracts for some of your people have expired or been superseded by new contracts. Yes. Um, we uh, we have been in talks with uh, some draftees and uh, we have lost uh, Baker to one of them. And, no, not uh, Baker, Susanti. Susanti? Yep, it was Susanti and... I already forgot who the other person was. <laughs> I'd have to look. Yeah, out of our pilots on the match today, Susanti was uh, drafted. Uh, excuse me. And um, uh, we will we will miss them, and uh, hopefully they will continue on a bright career. Indeed. And we wish them well, of course, wherever they may go uh, and wherever their fortunes take them in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. In the meantime, stick around, friends. We do have our next match coming up here shortly. Uh, so don't go too far. We'll uh, we'll be back soon. And, of course, at this point, the, the lights will come up. Production team will start coming in and, you know, rearranging things or what have you. Luke, mm -hmm. I knew that was going to be a tough fight for me no matter what I did. You had, like, 4,000 battle value advantage on me. Um, yeah, those those pilots really pack a punch at some point. Well, um, yeah, when you've got, I mean, at the end of the day, effectively, we're looking at you had a one zero and a one one, and then the five six. Uh, going I lost against the one but, one, right? Yeah, I you lost, lost the one one. Yeah, you lost the one one. Yeah. Uh, but between those two, the one one and the one zero, they both had a collective. Three ed or excuse me, three tactics. So you had the mm -hmm. initiative advantage compared to my absolutely none, two regulars and a green. Mm -hmm. Um and to make things even more entertaining, uh they were better pilots than they were gunners. They were five four instead of four five. So as it turns out, they didn't do as well as I would have liked on the piloting roles either. But regardless, uh they definitely gave as good as they could. It just was nowhere near enough to stand up to the highly experienced team that you put together. Uh, and then, of course, unfortunately, yeah. your team just got gutted, uh, losing two good pilots and a good tech. Well, uh, well, we'll have to see what the new pilots are in. And uh, if this has been affecting everybody, then, I mean, we're, we're getting closer and closer to fairer ground at the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, it's been kind so of hit or miss. Okay I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's working the way it's supposed to, which is to even up the ground a little bit. Um, we can't just have uh, minus one, minus one pilots. <laughs> well, the best you could ever get that I would allow would have been zero, zero. But even in even in the established lore, only there's only been a few pilots that made zero, zero. And we're talking people like Natasha Kerensky, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, Ulrich Kerensky, I believe, was a zero, zero. I could be completely wrong on that, but I, he was really super low. Jamie Wolf was probably pretty low as well, maybe a one, zero or one, one. Uh, but we're talking like some exceptional characters in the Battletech lore, uh, and only a few got that low, and some of them because of their clan training, which of course gives you that extra step. But yeah, so uh, I have a, I have a story then. Oh, here uh, we go. I'm just kidding. Go yes. No, so ahead. um, so you know how Dungeons and Dragons has stats. Yep. All right. Well, uh, me and a friend of mine, we were like ten. Okay. Go. And uh. No, go ahead. All right. Um, and uh, we were like 10, and we were like playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons at the time, and we were sword fighting with hockey sticks and stuff. I don't know what you think Canadians do, but that's pretty much what we do. I mean, if I'm thinking uh, about a Canadian sword fighting, a hockey stick is probably involved. <laughs> it's it's readily available, I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, so a uh, hockey stick is, is perfect. Uh, also, lots of broken fingers. Oh, I can um, imagine. Yeah, so the point being is uh, we decided one day that we were going to look through the rule book and then determine exactly what each stat was and how to calculate that in a real person. Okay. All right, so we went through all of these tests. Okay, so we, we saw that there's a carry capacity for strength and stuff like that. Yeah. So what yeah. we did was we loaded backpacks and things, and then we would do treks with those backpacks and increasing value until we would determine what our strength stat was, and then so on and so forth with dexterity, 
and constitution, okay. which constitution required basically um, like we're 10, right? So we, we, we think we're invincible, but um, <laughs> it involved borderline poisons to <laughs> enter our body. Um, so after a short hospital visit um, and a don't do whatever you're doing anymore, because whatever it is, is stupid <laughs> yeah, by course. a doctor. Of course. Uh, <laughs> We uh we determined uh our our basic physical stats. We couldn't we couldn't um calculate like intelligence or yeah, those are a lot more difficult to they're to abstract gauge, right? or gauge to so, gauge rather. Yeah. So um so uh we didn't we didn't end up as high as we thought, but it was a really interesting thought experiment as to like how a, a human being has like stats and stuff. And um in the theory in um in mech warrior to basically take a pilot and lower and it'd be like okay well what stats would they be on one to six rating um is is like super down my alley <laughs> <laughs> well the uh the funny part about that is is when you explore those ideas how the reverse ends up being true in that you know for instance you and your friend figuring out what your stats were but then realizing yeah. in the process that what went into putting these rules into place to determine that this stat was this much value, and that stat was that much value, you start to realize, like, wait a minute, these motherfuckers actually might have known what they were talking about when they wrote this shit down and typed it up. Uh, yeah. And, and a good example of that, and a good example of that I've noticed, too, is there's a number of YouTube videos I've seen um, people explaining the five foot by five foot grid uh, yeah. for hand-to-hand -hand combat and how much space an individual person takes and how that would you know what that would look for you know your standard attack with a one-handed weapon or you know movement and how far you can actually move in a given time frame for for a round of combat to you know how long would a round of combat be and i was like yeah, okay I, that I actually run yeah, yeah. I, I tried to run in combat myself because we do uh, in in our in our HEMA group, our yeah. fencing group. We um, uh, we we were very religious about the measure, and measure is the amount of distance where a sword becomes effective. Right. And anything closer than that, and you're giving yourself up to them. And any further than that, you're basically just you're wasting like, energy. You're wasting everything that you have as far as potential. Yep. So the measure is so important. And uh, another nerd of mine in the class was like, it's dangerously close to the five by five grid, isn't it? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that five by five grid has a lot of like, oh shit, that actually makes sense. That, that yeah. actually and works. A lot of people are like, no, that's not how that works and stuff. But like, we do, um, we do, we do really stupid things in our class where we will all <laughs> get like, lightsabers or something and 20 of us in a maybe a 40 by 40 room will just bash each other yep. at like backs and forwards and all that stuff and you you learn a lot about like how measure works but you also learn that if you just turn your back and try to run you're getting you're getting whacked yeah yeah the whole idea of an attack of opportunity it that's also suddenly a very real thing oh it's yeah and then how to clear that so the rule of like a five foot step and then you can run makes a lot of sense because you need to be able to click get out of measure yep and then you're useless against them and then you can run away or whatever yeah like you like my cat's over here he was he's yeah. been sitting he's been sitting on my seat with me right behind me this whole time and he just got up and now i'm trying to keep him from batting at the cables oh because he's being a little ornery little shit uh but yeah so, no yeah. um that's, so that's always an interesting thought to or thing to explore um yeah so uh so the stats were were kind of funny because like um I was uh, I was 411 until I was like 16 <laughs> and then all of a sudden you sprang up I'm sure Yeah well I'm, I'm like 510 right now but like 411 to 510 that's almost a foot of just like all of a sudden grown but the point being is at 10 years old you can imagine I was a very short kid Yeah, yeah. uh so not a physically strong one um so running me through all these like um strength tests was hilarious to my friend who was like six one by that time <laughs> <laughs> that is fun yeah it was great well yeah. that is it for us here and now for tonight for this match thank you everybody for stopping by uh and checking out the video and hopefully you enjoyed the show if you have of course as always please consider the likes and shares and subscribes and all those other silly buttons but most importantly for me 
in the description is the link for the Discord server. Come on by, say hello, talk some smack, talk some shop, whatever it is. And if you do come by, make sure you vote. And if you're already on the server, please vote for the next show or campaign for the Krieg Dominion and the things that I run for tabletop role playing. Uh, in the meantime, Luke, final words for our viewers? Yes, uh, join the Discord and then shit talk us about how we avoided the uh, Jenner being repaired for one wealth. <laughs> That's how you know that they watched this episode. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> God, yeah. Tell us how we, we completely Tell me how I up. fucked up. <laughs> leave, it in, leave it in the comments. More importantly, come on down to the Discord and talk shit to both of us. And the rest of us, too. Why not? All right, we're going to get out of here. Stay good, my friends. Stay safe. Uh, do what you got to do to take care of you and yours. And as for me and Luke, we're out of here. Have a good one, my friends.